Nutrients used by plants are classified in three ways, as primary nutrients, secondary nutrients, or micronutrients. Primary soil macronutrients represent some of the key nutrients that are used by plants. These primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These primary nutrients are usually used in larger quantities than other nutrients, and that's why they form the basis of common fertilizers. This brings up the concept of the law of minimum as it's applied to plants and agriculture. This can be stated as the growth of a plant is hindered by the limiting nutrient, or the one that is the most scarce according to need. This means that if one particular nutrient essential to growth is missing, despite adding more and more of other nutrients, the plant will still not grow or will not thrive. This can be stated in other ways, such as the chain is only as good as its weakest link, or the most abundant nutrient in the soil is only as good as the least abundant nutrient in the soil. This essentially means that all nutrients are important to plant growth. And if one nutrient is lacking, despite all other nutrients being in abundance, the plant will still not grow well. So even though nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are referred to as primary nutrients, all other nutrients, secondary and micronutrients, are also very important and can limit plant growth and plant health. Nitrogen is used in every cell of the plant and is part of the formation of protein. It is also part of the chlorophyll, which are essential to the process of photosynthesis. Nitrogen can influence rapid plant growth and it often gets into the soil from the air or from fertilizers in crop production. Nitrogen is absorbed by plants in the form of ammonium or nitrate. Too much nitrogen in the soil can lead to excessive foliage or leaf growth and slow root growth. It can also lead to plant burning because of dehydration. Too little nitrogen can lead to chlorosis, which is seen as a changing or weaker leaf color. This can also lead to slower plant growth and poor fruit production. Phosphorus is also essential to the process of photosynthesis, where the sun's energy is transferred into chemical energy, which is a form that's useful to the plant. It also stimulates early root and plant growth and can hasten maturity. Phosphorus is absorbed by plants in the form of dihydrogen phosphate or monohydrogen phosphate. Too much phosphorus can prevent the uptake by the plant of other nutrients. It can also be a source of pollution, especially to water systems. Too little phosphorus can lead to stunted plant growth, and in many cases this is evidenced by purple leaves. This also leads to delayed flowering and delayed new growth. Potassium increases the vitality of plants and also leads to greater resistance to diseases. It helps in the movement of oils, starches, and sugars inside the plant and can lead to greater fruit quality. It is best absorbed simply as a potassium ion. Too much potassium can also limit the uptake of other nutrients, but more specifically, calcium, nitrogen, and magnesium. Too little potassium can lead to burning or scorching of the plant. It also makes plants more susceptible to disease and frost damage. This can be evidenced by purple spots on the underside of leaves. Too little potassium also leads to reduced growth, seed and fruit development.